Hello and welcome back to Analog Comics. In my previous video I mentioned that I might not buy any new comics this year and yet I still have two massive piles of comics here and at least about half of them is they are something that I have not read yet. But I have kept my promise because all these books here they were ordered before I got the bad news of that I had the can cancer. And I thought this would be a great moment to make one of my almost enough comics videos, which is basically a comic haul. Now there's two reasons why I'm making this particular video and the way I am doing th this particular video. First is that it's going to be a comic haul because it's easy for me. Now I want to get good results with minimum efforts. So the comic haul is kind of easy. And in fact, I have not really prepared this at all. I just piled the books here that I think I have not shown you in my previous videos. There might be some mistakes, don't, don't know, but I think I haven't shown any of these. There are a few very interesting ones here that I'm particularly um, excited about myself. And then some of them are kind of no-brainers that just kind of keep filling some certain series that I'm running late behind on. So I just want to get more parts to those series. The other reason is 1st of February 2022. So about a year ago, a little little over a year ago, I released my first video on this channel. So this was supposed to be kind of anniversary comic haul also. Originally I had all kinds of plans for the anniversary video and it was supposed to come out the same day, 1st of February, but this year. But then I was diagnosed cancer and my life was quite messed for a couple of months. But now my cancer treatment therapy has started and so far so good. The side effects are creeping in, I have to say that. And knowing what's coming, it's going to be very rough couple of months ahead. So it's good to do this video now because now I know that I can do this. But the timing is of essence because I can't do the anniversary, the first anniversary video uh, next year. So I kind of have to do this now and I want to do this now. So this is a very selfish video. First, it's I'm celebrating my first anniversary, this uh, channel's anniversary. I'm doing it the easiest way by having it as a comic haul. And I have absolutely no script for this. So I just take the books and say whatever comes to my mind and that's it. I just need to be gentle with myself and not overstress this. Before we jump into these two massive piles here, a uh, quick recap of how my channel got started. First, I wasn't planning to do this at all. This was not my idea originally. I was following few channels on, in YouTube and I need to mention them. There was five channels particularly that I was following very closely. Uh, it was uh, Near Mint Conditions. I think that's the one I found first. I was just surprised to find this kind of content in YouTube. So anyway, I found the Near Mint Conditions channel I like the content, still do. I learned a lot about uh, the big two DC Marvel, but there was also comics outside that superhero genre, the Dark Horse, Image, even European comics, all kinds of comics. And that massive collection of comics, it was kind of intriguing. I, I was just hooked into the channel right away. I'm still following it. And the other channel across the pond was Comic Tropes. And it's also one of those channels that I still follow very closely. I really like the kind of, it's kind of documentary, small documentaries that, that Chris does there. And, and they are very well researched. He's focusing on some certain subject and he's going quite deep into those. And they've been very, well, they're fun, educating, and they always make me respect how much he knows, how like he's very deep into the scene. So I had already found two really great comic channels. So I thought maybe there are even more, something that is more focused on the things that I like, because I'm not big on the superhero genre in general. I, I, I do read it sometimes, but basically I read around it, almost anything else but that. And I found three channels that were exactly what I was looking for. And I'm still following them religiously. And I have learned so much from these channels. Just by watching them, it has helped me with my own channel. First of those three is For the Love of Comics. The host on this channel, Angshuman, he has a very particular style to go in 
into comics, I always tell him that he's fussing. And I love fussing. It's important part of this uh, hobby, not just reading the comics, but fussing about it. And I love it when there is a friend or someone that you can talk to about comics. And when you're looking at his videos, I mean, he talks a lot and, and for a long time, but he's having this almost like this inner conversation, uh, in, even in, in his live broadcast that kind of makes it also already some kind of um, discussion just by listening it. But of course there is the cream of the cake, which is the actual comment section and discussing about them. So I really love fussing about comics and he is like, when he goes into fussing, it's like hyperdrive. And I also need to mention one thing that I think was kind of insignificant to him, but was a massive thing for me. In one of his uh, videos, he just uh, popped up my channel, like the logo and mentioned my channel. And I had something like 150 subscribers back then. I mean, that's nothing. And it, it means like my ch channel was basically nothing. And he just put it up there that, you know, he liked this or, you know, go check this out. And that just as a gesture was a big thing for me because when someone much more experienced in this thing kind of gives you a pat on the back saying that, you know, you're doing good work, just keep, keep doing it. It really helps because doing this, I still haven't got a read of the feeling that I'm not good enough. I'm not doing the right things. Am I doing the right things? Maybe I'm doing things wrong. So when someone gives you a bit more confidence from within the scene, it, it's not a small thing. And this is a good jumping point to the next channel, which is Earl Grey. I don't remember which channel of these three I found first, but I always enjoyed listening to Earl Grey's kind of relaxed way of displaying stuff. And he has a massive collection of European comics. I always, when I see it, I'm, I'm all openly envious to that. And I have told him that I envy the way the, there is comics available in Germany, the European comics. But as he reminded me, it's, it's always relative because he is envious of the French scene because they have the biggest, biggest selection of European comics. So I guess the cast is always greener on the other side. But just like for the love of comics, Earl Grey, when he does videos, they are almost always something that I am really into. I already, I may have already read that and I just want to hear his take on it, his angle, or it's something that I'm aware of and would like to know more. And of course, there's a lot of stuff that I have never heard of. And then he shows me that, by the way, there is this kind of comic too. And as far mentions go, I need to tell a story about him too, because one morning when I woke up, I took my iPad, open it and look at my channel. And suddenly I think there was about 50% more subscribers on my channel. I mean, I'm still a small channel. There aren't that many subscribers. So I opened my channel and saw that there's about 50% more people there. I, first I thought it, it was a, some kind of a bug. So I tried to try to update the page. It was still like that. And being a Finnish, my first thought was negative. I was thinking that now I'm part of some kind of internet scandal. I have said something stupid or it has been linked to something stupid and people are flooding in to see how stupid I am. But <laughs> it, it turned out to be that Earl Grey had mentioned me in some of his videos and people, people were just coming in to see the channel and uh, quite many of them stayed. So again, I got the support from the channel that I was fan of. It just feels special. And the third channel I need to mention is Off My Shelves. Uh, comic books uh, shown on that channel are always interesting. And I'm following it religiously. I always joke that it's not legal not to watch his videos. And that's about how I go about it. And I also like the relaxed way everything is done. I, I guess I'm trying to do a bit like that myself too. Of myself also reach out to me personally after hearing about my cancer. And this all made me think how good uh, example these three channels have said to me. I mean, I was a fan of these channels. I followed their channels uh, way before I had my own channel. And then when I started my own channel, I got all this respect and kind of support from all these channels. And it's not a small thing because it sets 
kind of culture. You don't have to say it, but it tells you that this is the way we are. This is, this is the community. We help each other. If you're a newcomer, you know, we help you out, we support you. And that means that I have to pay that forward. At least that's what I learned from those three channels. So those were the five channels that were the kind of cornerstone for analog comics. But anyway, let's continue. So I tried to keep this part short. So I was following all these channels all the time. And I, when I went to bed, I always had iPad there and I was just looking at them, listening to them. And, and even my wife got to know the voices of these um, people on those channels. And sometimes she was like, ah, oh, put on for the love of comics. He has such a soothing voice. So uh, she got to know the channels, uh, although she didn't want to <laughs> in a way, but it was her that pushed me into this. Like in most cases in my life, my wife gets the best out of me. And she just casually told me that, you know, you should put up your own channel. You have closets full of comics and maybe you could say something about them too. My first reaction, of course, was like, N what are you talking about? No, 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 no. It's like, look at this guy. I could, I could never do this. But she was adamant about it. She was like, no, no, you can do it. You know, you should do it. And although I kind of pushed it aside, the seed had been planted. So one day I found myself looking at my comics, kind of thinking, you know, what if, you know, are there, are there any comics to talk about? What should I say? Where should I film it? How, you know, how should I do it technically? And in the end, here we are. My channel is up and it's been running for one year now. The first videos on this channel, they were basically just technical tests. Uh, I was just trying to learn the camera. Took me at least three videos to find the autofocus. Then I had to learn many things with, you know, the microphone, like how to handle the voicing. Then of course the uh, editing and all that. It has been a massive learning curve for me because I'm lazy. I don't redo, redo, redo everything until it's perfect. What I do is I do it and then I look at it in the end looking like, oh, that's not good. Let's upload it to the YouTube and let's make it better with the next video. That's my process. And then with the next video, I remember that, okay, that thing was pretty bad, maybe I should focus a bit more on that. So I take really small steps at a time. And to be honest, I felt that only at the end of last year, I started finding my own voice in a way. And, and also kind of, um, I got things settled in my head, how I want to do this and where I want to go. And one more thing I need to mention before jumping to the piles here is you, subscribers uh, of this channel you are at least half of this. I mean, I like talking about uh, comics. This is the fun part. Uh, I don't like the technical stuff. I don't like uh, actually the technical part of filming and, and the microphones, but I don't have a microphone. What, what you are watching now is with iPhone and it's uh, also iPhone's own microphone. So this is the <laughs> minimum setup in the world. As I said, maximum impact with minimal efforts. Having discussion with someone about the comics is to me as important as talking about them here. So uh, I have to say big thank you for all of you watching this because for some reason uh, my videos get a lot of comments. I get a lot of people commenting, putting their ideas, so maybe just stop by to say thanks for making video of this. I haven't seen this done for a while. Uh, and that I never thought that would be so big bonus and how good that would make me feel. That was, I, I kind of hoped for it, but I, I didn't know that with this little amount of su subscribers, I get this, amount, this much um, conversation going on. And, and that has been the, one of the biggest driving factors for this channel. In fact, I think I already got negative comments also. It's in, in the video of uh, the Red Star, if you want to go look at it. it. It's my fourth or fifth video maybe. So in the very beginning, I did a video about Red Star. The thumbnail has just two big words. It says, no, it says war and lies in, in huge letters. And that, by the way, is, is it's one of the least watched videos on my channel but it is one of the most interesting comics in my collection. 
I, I, I'm not kidding. It, it's something that everybody should read. It's very, it, it's a great comic. But there's a comment there which I kind of uh, see as a negative comment because the video is about the Red Star, which is a comic done in a propaganda style in a way. And I also say certain things about the Russian history. And that kind of hit the nerve. Um, I know that the name of the commenter is uh, Russian. It's in the, in the Russian letters. I can read them. I don't know usually what the words mean, but I can read the letters. But here he had commented something like, yeah, and you're using the uh, propaganda yourself to do this. And he that comment even got one like there. But it was done in such a polite manner. It, it was very, it was done, you know, you don't have to agree all, all the time. And if that person got annoyed by that or angry, triggered as they say, that was a very polite comment. So I left it there and I was, I, I even showed my wife, look, I got a negative comment. I just started and my first negative comments come in and it now it even has a like, but yeah, but that's also, that's also a very good um, uh, example how to uh, not think the same way and be, still be respectful. So, it's there if you want to see. But as I said, that's only the one occasion. So I, I think I've been lucky in that sense too, that it's been mostly just regular conversation. But okay, enough of this. That was the beginning and the history of this channel. And I took the opportunity to tell it because it is the first anniversary video. But because the video is still not about me, but about the comics, let's jump into these two massive piles. So what I'm going to do now is that I just go through the first pile and then the next pile and they are in not in any particular order. And uh, yeah, I have no larger plan on this. I just take the comic and say something about it and then we move on. But first is, yeah, there. My eyes. Now I can actually see something. Okay, here first, actually, the three first ones, they are all, well, I take them one at a time, so it's easier to handle. Spiru. These are the hardcover Spirus that are now coming out. They belong to these new adventures of Spiru, which means that they are by um, new creators that are not doing the basic uh, Spiru line. They, these are more like they're testing what's possible with Spiro. They're, they can be even more adult. Like in this series, Spiro has a drinking problem. That would never, never, ever fly in, in the basic Spiro series, which is always something that fits um, younger audience also. But uh, Schwartz and Jan here are doing it uh, the other way. This is actually the second part of their Spiro series that they've been doing. The first one was something called like Leopard Woman. And the art is something like this. Okay. The next Spiro is by Jan and Tarin. Again, these new adventures and a bit different art here lately i've been very much into spiro i uh, somehow i got this spiro fever and now i've been trying to collect everything that i don't have yet and from that i also got bitten by franquin uh, the most famous spiro artist and now i'm trying to hold myself back but i feel like i'm i may have to buy everything that franquin has done outside Spiro also. And the third Spiro is something that should not even be in this new adventure series. I know that because it's done by Fournier. Fournier was the person, the creator who um, got the job of doing Spiro after Franquin. So that's years and years ago. So there's no way Fournier would do these new adventures. Uh, for some reason they skipped, well, I guess I know the reason, they skipped Fournier's Spirus in Finland. They didn't translate them. Uh, they kind of skipped 
they were Frank Wynn and then they skipped to other uh, those who came later mostly because um, Fournier's stories aren't that good he was not very popular he is very close to the original style of uh, Frank Wynn he was uh, maybe that's the reason he got the job but his storytelling skills are not on par I have not read this one yet so I can't say any good or bad things about this one it says uh, gold makers like alchemists that's the name of the story oh yeah let's look at the art also show you that is Fourier style next on the pile is something that I have no idea what it is it's by Alan Moore and Oscar Sarate I hope this is the Alan Moore. I don't know if there are other Alan Moores, but I found this a second hand in a local comic store. So it's in Finnish. Hiljainen and Kuolema means something like silent death. It was five euro cheap, but let's see. There is an English name I think here also for it. A small killing. That's the English name. I have never heard about this story. This is the art. Maybe you know better, but it's some kind of story. I, the way it says in the back, it feels like it's a story of how someone takes these little decisions, little betrayals or um, little murders, as they call them, that slowly change you and take you away from the pure self that you used to be. Very interesting. Okay, the next one is a massive disappointment. I haven't even read it yet and it's a disappointment and it's all my fault. It's not the book's fault, it's my fault. Uh, this is from Magnetic Press and what I did is I made m quite big order and what I did is I went to different publishers sites, Magnetic, Image, Dark Horse, and I decided that I ordered just one thing from each of them and, and see what comes up. And I'm usually quite picky when I order. I do some research because my shelf space is limited. My budget is limited and it's very hard, if not impossible in Finland to get rid of the comics. And then there's the hassle of selling them, which I don't like anyway, but we don't have that kind of uh, easy way to get rid of at least about for the English comics. Finnish comics I can take to the local local store and then they, they take them in as second hand, but they will not take the English ones. Ah, and I made one exception. I didn't check this book before purchasing it. I just saw the cover. I was looking through Magnetic Press and they have lots of interesting stuff. And when I saw this cover art, I mean, I thought that I had never seen anything better than this. It looked like uh, some kind of cartoon and, and, and a frame from a cartoon. And it's about the Arsene Lupin, the gentleman's thief. But what I didn't read is that it's illustrated by Vince Mali. It's not drawn, it's illustrated. So this is actually a textbook story with some pictures here and there. Now, I could have returned this because it's a web purchase, but I'm an old school guy because this was all about me neglecting it, me doing my part as a buyer. Uh, I didn't do, do the research at all. I don't put this uh, problem on the other people's shoulders. I just lick my wounds. So I keep the book and I intend to read it someday too, but where should I put it? I mean, is it okay to keep this in a comic book shelves? Uh, I think I need to find another place for that. But I mean, if they would only do the comic with this graphics, absolutely awesome. Okay, at least I got a nice cover. Yeah, I didn't even know that Magnetic Press does something like that, that they have textbooks with illustrations only. But okay, enough of that. The next one is Berserk. This is volume eight. 
nothing special about it, except that this was a really good volume. I highly enjoyed it. There was a few volumes before this that were a bit kind of trippy. Uh, there is There are these monsters, almost godlike monsters, and it took the story into the realm where, where it felt like it was just tripping in that another realm and uh, it just kept going and going. But this volume 8 brings the action back to earth in a way and we get to see it's back to guts just slashing at the monsters and being a really angry guy. This is why what I like about Berserk. I know there's already over 10 volumes out, but I'm, I'm running behind this. I always forget to order this, basically. The next one is actually three books. Voro. This is Finnish fantasy comic series. And um, if you look, this is the volume one, two and three. So basically each volume is almost double size of the previous one. It's a trilogy. But even the first part is kind of standalone-ish. There is a definite ending to that and it could have ended there. But it also left a possibility to continuation and, and it was continued. A rare thing, a Finnish fantasy series. Voro, let me put these two away. Easier to show this. Voro is an old-fashioned word for Finnish word for uh, thief. And this book has already been uh, translated to many other languages, also in English. In English, it's called Lily the Thief, as uh, uh, the, the protagonist, this uh, young girl, she's called Lily, Lilia in Finnish. There's a small catch though. The, the Finnish version is in black and white. Or maybe I should say gray and shades of gray and white these but the translated versions all of them that i have seen they are in full color so at, at least lily the thief was in full color and i went to see some of the pages online and it was actually really good in color too i couldn't decide which is better i usually think that if the original is in black and white it rarely does it good to color it. And, and even if I first read the colored version, uh, the black and white usually feels better. Maybe it was because it was created that way. But when I, when I saw the pages of this, the coloring was done really well. The story starts as a very simple thing. Lily is a thief of a thief and she belongs to the thief guild. And she got a uh, to trouble by stealing a certain thing that she shouldn't and things start escalating and as the story goes and the books get bigger and bigger the threat becomes even bigger and bigger and, and she's about to cause the end of the world basically so um, it gets to a epic proportion but it's also fun at the same time so I think this was meant to be also for a younger audience. The thing here is that in the Finnish version, there is a little bit blood here and there. It's not gory. There is some blood and that doesn't really bother that much when it's grayish and white. But I know that the French version, when it's colored, then the blood is blood. So what they did in the uh, English version, is that they reduced or I think even removed the blood. So the translated versions are different. So there's already three different versions. There is this black and white in Finnish. Then the English one is in color with less blood. And I think the, at least the French one is in color with the blood that is here. So if you're buying this for a younger audience, just check the, the blood thing if you're um, skeptical about, about that. that. That's one of the uh, points of discussion when, when I hear people talking about this. This is a series that I probably kind of have to do a video about later too. Something interesting from Finland. Then I have yet another Hellboy. 
I've done two Hellboy videos very recently and these just keep dropping in, these add-on stories and this is no different. The Silver Lantern Club and just like the previous one this is in hardcover and these are again stories around the main story rather than in it so if you're only interested in the main Hellboy story, you really don't need this. But I'm kind of, this is one of my weak points. This is one of the places where I've been uh, kind of a completionist in a way. But I have to say that now that these are collected only in hardcover, and I kind of blew my budget with this cancer therapy thing, at least for a year, suddenly Hellboy comics have become a luxury item that I might need to skip in in future maybe if they come up with some kind of cheaper collected edition maybe have a more stories even in one but i'd like to have this in soft cover i really don't need the hard cover in in hellboy but uh, i already read this and it was basic hellboy fun nothing spectacular but still kind of worth it the stories are set in a timeline more between uh, the Witchfinder and the regular Hellboy series. It's basically an old guy telling Hellboy and Mr. Pradenholm remembering their own uh, adventures with the Silver Lantern Club. Okay, what we have here is, oh yeah, James Tokoy, Orphan and the Five Bees. This is a dark horse trade paperback. I got this because I read well, I have the Alien Dead Orbit by James Stoker, and I love that book. It's great. I've read it many times. And his style is its very particular. There's so much detail here that it reminds me of, of underground style. Usually underground name is given to these highly detailed uh, style but at the same time the line work isn't that fine it's like a bit thicker line work but there's definitely that underground tones here this is uh, some kind of a samurai slash sorcery beast thing uh, i haven't read it yet but it, it looks great next on the pile is oh gira taniguchi the walking man expanded edition what does the expanded mean oh there it is now in an expanded edition with the available full color pages restored and reading in the original japanese sense japanese sense okay so the sense is this way this is the way this style is the thing why i ordered this i had no idea this artist, Jiro Taniguchi, has quite many books, but his very clear style, this is like a hi-fi pictures, very detailed. Some of the panels are uh, such that they aren't like here, it, it, it's a street, there's nothing, there's no interesting objects in the picture but the picture itself is interesting because the, the amount of detail is so insane. And for me, this is, this is some kind of hybrid between, it feels like a hybrid between manga and clear line, the European clear line. Very interesting. Haven't read it, but I'm waiting to get into this. Next one is by Amy de Jong, Days of Sand. This is something that I put on my shopping list the second I saw the cover. It has the same kind of quality that these graphics like that uh, Arsene Lupin pan that I bought. That was not actually a comic, but luckily this is an actual comic. And uh, yeah, I just, there's something about this. It, it looks like a frame from some kind of cartoon. And I haven't read it, but I have watched videos about it, so I kind of know what it's about. But for me, it was the graphics 
that sold it to me. And the way it feels like it's not in a hurry to tell anything. It, it feels like it takes its time. But yeah, I don't have anything more deep to say about it at this point, other than it, it feels like a very, at least graphically, very perfect package. Next on the pile, I have a couple of European albums. Nila Pielinen, I think it's Gaston in uh, French. And is it Gomer? Gomer in English, something like that. Gopher, Gomer, can't, can't remember now. But it's by Frank Wynn. Frank Wynn is the Spiru master who made Spiru what it is today. Basically, Frank Wynn, what Frank Wynn did to Spiru was the same that Walt, uh, Walt, no, what, what uh, Karl Barks did to Donald Duck and the ducks in, in general. They created a world around the character and made them more interesting. And at some point, Frank Wynn got kind of bored to do the Spiru and wanted to focus on on the Gaston uh, character. Just a goofy guy working in office, doing all these strange inventions and messing things up for everybody. This is still in plastics. I've had a lot of these albums in the past, these two, but then I got rid of them and uh, it was a mistake. No, because now I want all the Frank Wins back. The next one is something I bought because it was cheap. European album, two euro. And uh, the, the graphics, it looks so much like uh, Albert Uderzo, like a very Asterix style, this one. But it's not done by uh, Uderzo. It's uh, written by Bianchi and drawn by Dabere. I looked inside. It still looked like something that is Asterix influenced, but with the night theme. And so it's clearly some kind of funny comic. I have no idea. I've seen this for years in, in the comic bins, but never took it. And then there's another cover that I've seen this one, but this was there with two euros. So I took it. Last on the first pile is Eternal, one of the classics, you know, it's one of those books, I guess, that everybody has to own if you're into comics. I've kind of put my purchasing, just moving it further and further. Now I found a Finnish version. I, this might have been out for a long time, but I decided to go with the Finnish version because this is a co-op with two publishers, they're like Zum Teufel. This Zum Teufel is more like the publisher. And then this Quark Kirja, Quark book. It's kind of a collective of uh, fans and hobbyists. And I want to support that kind of work when, when, they, when they do this. So I'd rather buy it in Finnish language. But otherwise, this is as it should be as the Eternal should be. I have not read this yet, so I don't know if I like, you know, if I think that this is the classic that everyone should have. But I'm very interested to get into this anyway. We're halfway there, one pile down, one to go. Next one is a collection of albums. I think this was suggested to me in some of the comments. Michael Moorcock's Elric. I've said many times that I'm not a massive uh, in, in fantasy. I don't know a lot about it and I'm still like that. Uh, I do like, I, I found that I like fantasy more in comics than I do in movies or books. Although I am reading now a book in, in fa fantasy book at the moment, which I like a lot, but I'm mostly a science fiction guy. I always end up into science fiction mostly. But this looks really quality package. It has a quite hefty holder cover for the albums. And then there are four hardcover albums like this. And here. Here. 
I don't know anything about Elric. I have heard of the name, I have heard the Michael Moorcock name, but that's about it. Between each of the books there is a card. I have to say, I don't know what these are for. I've seen in many comic book channels, they are showing these nice packages and they come with cards. What are you supposed to do with this? I don't know. Help me out. <laughs> I don't know what to do with this. But anyway, let's I give you an example of the art itself. There you go. I th think this is supposed to be quite bloody and gruesome in, in general. And the, this series is by Titan Comics. I still haven't read any of them, so I can't comment on that, except that the package itself, like the hard covers, this one, everything feels very, very sturdy, but I might get back to this once I read them. And one, one more thing about this, uh, I really went for this when I learned that this is still in the European album format. When when uh, when the comic is translated into English and it's kept in yeah kept in the European album size, that's when I'm on board usually immediately. Next one is a little bit weird one. Looks like this. When I saw the cover, I thought that this is by Frank Wynn, uh, the the Spiro artist, but it says Danier, and even the uh, the name is written the same style that Franklin would write it. So when in comic store I stopped, I had to see what this is about. And I read it back here and it says that Daniel is actually a pen name for Dan Yippes. Dan Yippes is an artist known for his work with ducks. He does very car bark style uh, graphics for ducks. In fact, he has done stories written by Gar Barks uh, that he didn't finish, but he gave the stories to Dan Yippes uh, to draw. So he, he is one of those big duck artists that is known, known in the scene. But this particular book was his uh, kind of uh, hats off to Frank Wynn. And it's clear that Dan Yippes can change the style to whatever he wants. If you, I'll show you some panels here. Very Franklin like. So I think he has achieved his at least his graphical goal here. Next another album collection but this time uh, two albums. It's by Shaq Tardy. This is his World War One series. It was the War of the Trenches and God damn this war. I already read this first part and it was amazing. It really catches the brutality of the, this war and the human suffering. It, it takes the reader there. It's not just uh, kind of listing things that happen, but it really kind of, um, it fleshes out the, the meaningless suffering and the suffering is, it's almost absurd. You could not invent this in a way. I, I bet all of these things have happened. It's really hard to come up with things like this. Yeah, the suffering is in the absurd level, but at the same time, these kind of books are important. I think it's important to know our past. It's easier to avoid it in the future. This is one of those comics that made me feel like I have read something of uh, literature, you know, something better. And, and that made me feel good too. It was not just, you know, bang, bang, and, and cowboys and Indians. Yeah, just by 
this first book alone I can recommend this but it's a nice package anyway and again album size uh, publication can't go wrong with that always always this is the best way to publish any comics I love any but most of them oh the next one this is a treasure this is a treasure once upon a time in France this is a, a series that I tried to find in Finnish. I know this has been published in Finland. Uh, originally, this, this is a six volume, like six albums story. Each of them are kind of standalone. You can read them like that, but to be honest, reading the whole story is like it, it's worth like 10 volumes. And six but in Finland they were published in hardcover albums and in five albums because the last one the fifth it had the fifth and the sixth part but they were really hard to find as a complete series and when I found and, and they were really expensive because when they never when I found one it was 120 euros no 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 and I kind of gave up. I, in a way, I forgot that. I didn't even look this in English. I thought, I guess something in it made me think that this will never ever be translated anyway. So I, I didn't even go looking for it in English. But when I did, <laughs> there it is. And this was something like 20, 30 euros. And for six full uh, albums, that's nothing. It, it was really worth it. This is done by Fabian Nuri and Sulwain Bale. Uh, I'll show you the graphics. The story is based on a real person. So um, the, the, the story here is true, but it, it's being kind of um, fictionalized. Of course, they can't know everything that has been said between people here and there. I'll show you. But it's about this person uh, who before the World War II starts doing business with scrap metal and he becomes super rich, like one of the richest person in France. He's a billionaire basically. Then the World War II starts, uh, the Nazis arrive and he's a uh, Jew but somehow he managed to play both sides. Just with his money and influence, he plays to the hands of the Nazis, but also to the resistance. And uh, it, it's uh, hard to explain, but I, I'd have to think for a long time how to explain it otherwise, but it's really well done story. Uh, I read this already. And this was also one of those comic series that felt like I had read something more than just a comic. And oh, by the way, I have to say something about the publisher. One, one reason I, did, I didn't find this. Oh, there's actually the photograph of the actual person that this tells about. Uh, the graphics are done so that the world is kind of very realistic, but the characters are a bit cartoonish. Their faces are like exaggerated in a way but, but okay I was talking about the publisher this was a surprise and the reason why I didn't find this when I was kind of scrolling through the image or whatever publisher sites this is done by <laughs> this is published by US Na Naval Institute what I know US Naval Institute oh but I may get back to this in more detail later, so we go in there. But just so you know, Once Upon a Time in France, I really enjoyed this one. And this was a treasure for me. Uh, and it's in the album format and also not just format, but the size of it. It's soft cover. Uh, paper is high quality. Colors are great. Opens really nicely. And this is a nice package in it but u.s naval institute can't get a, hit my head around that next one is wilson by daniel close this is a finnish version like 
Like, as we say in Finland, that's a Finnish publishing house. I bought this because I saw it in the off my shelves, had it on his uh, video about this, and I found this second hand in Finnish, something like eight euro, the full album. Haven't read it yet, but I know that this is about a person who is superbly annoying. <laughs> so, and uh, funny that way, but that's about that. Next is just a filler to the series that I have started. A, a reckless series, Friend of the Devil by Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. I'm sure most of you know the series, you know the creators. So far, anything they've made, I've liked them. They, there's nothing that I have disliked. Uh, some of the books may not have been super exciting, but they've all been good. I mean, the general level of this creator team is it's very special. But this is the second part in the Reckless series, and now I got to continue that one too. The next one is a bit same type case saga, uh, volume 10. Uh, saga was on hiatus for a while, and now it's continuing. Haven't read it yet, but I love the saga, everything that happened before and I want to continue it. Nothing uh, more to say about it, and I'm pretty sure that anyone watching this knows, at least by name, the Saga series. Then a funny one. Dungeon by Johan, Johan Svar and Louis Trondheim. And this is Zenith, vol volumes one and two, The Barbarian Princess. But the reason why I bought this is the publisher, NBM. As I mentioned, I just went through all kinds of different publishers and I wanted to order one book from each. And NBM used to be my to-go publisher. I found so much great stuff from there, like The Forever War, um, The Wake, uh, The Mercenary. They used to put out, they were too early. They were putting out European albums in European album format and size in English in the 90s. And it was too early, I think. Uh, USA was not ready for good graphics in big size. And something happened after that. If you go to NBM site, it doesn't look really good. It looks like some somebody, someone's father made it in the 80s. And maybe it is like that. But anyway, I went through the selection and I decided I'm going to order from them because uh, they've done so much good stuff that I still love to read. And I didn't find a lot interesting, but this seemed really goofy. I didn't like the graphics in the cover at first, but when I read this, I became a fan and I think I'm going to have more of this. It's a kind of, um, let me show you some kind of page with art that is easier to see. It's like that style. This laughs at the tropes of fantasy. So th this is made by fans of fantasy, for the fans of fantasy, I guess. Uh, I was afraid that this would require too much. You know, I was afraid that I, I should be even die harder within fantasy to get this, but that was not the case. And also when I started reading this, this didn't feel particularly funny and it still isn't funny it's not like a belly laugh thing but it's a uh, good humor it makes you smile easy to read and it, it's a something that yeah i think it's more like smiling humor than uh, the belly laugh it doesn't take itself seriously at all and it plays with all kinds of yeah all kinds of uh, cliches within the fantasy world and the characters that I didn't like at first, they kind of grew on me because th there's two volumes, there's two books in this one volume. And that was a good thing because then I got to spend more time with them. And because they are also cliches in a way. So you get to know, they, they are like, um, they don't change. They always react the same way to different problems. And that's the basics of the humor in a way. And once you get to know them and see how they always end up doing the same things, you start to like them. Maybe it's also the timing, but 
this was a home run for me and, and I'm planning to get more of the same thing. I wanted to like NBM and what they do and now I have this dungeon series and there's quite many books already out in this series and if the level is as high I, I think I'll be buying quite many of them and I have no problem sending money over to NBM as as I said they were they tried to do the right thing but they were oh, years ago but it, it was too early and the next on the pile is the Chimerian the strange thing about this is that these are Conan stories made in Europe they are published in English by uh, a place. There's some kind of loophole, legal loophole that when these stories are made with the way they were exactly in the original books, then you can publish this. I don't know how that works. Cause uh, I think the Conan stories that are done in USA and they are like the original stories. They're not actually the original. There, there was some kind of changes in the stories and those books are those comics are based on them whereas these are based on the very original text of conan stories in fact here in in the comic book after the story there is the actual original story in text after, there's two stories in this book there's two different graphic styles, two, two different stories, and let's see, well, like this one, it's a bit shady, but anyway, I haven't read this yet, but the first thing that I noticed when I unpack this is that the size is diminished. This is not the European album size. A blaze, don't do it like this, you know, there is a reason why European albums are European album size. There's so much detail and the line work is based on bigger panels. Not all artwork need bigger panels, but just looking at them, you can see that bigger pictures would, they would do justice to this. But I have no, nothing more to say about this yet. I have to read it first. Next one is a small book, but it doesn't matter. This is a this is perfect comic. This is a perfect comic. The book tour by Andy Watson. I had this on my shopping list for a long, long time. Then I saw a video by For the Love of Comics where he talked about this and I remembered, oh yeah, I had that on my shopping list. And the next time I ordered, I moved it to the shopping cart and decided, okay, I'm going to going to do it now. And whoa boy, I just read this in January. And I already know that this will be on my best reads of this year. It, I mean, it will be. There's, there's no way I will find 10 more uh, better books than this. There is not single panel in this book that is wrong. It's, um, and it's still done in a very simple graphic style. It's, it's not just a book tour story. But it's this one writer doing a book tour and alongside runs kind of a maybe murder mystery would would you say but um, there's shady things going on but it's also story of this one person and it's very cringy at points some at some point it's um, how would I say it's cough some people would say that it's Kafka like the tone and the atmosphere is very Kafka-like. And it reminded me, I read, when I was in teens, I read, who was it? Albert Camus. I think it was Albert Camus. He had a book about person being persecuted. It was like he was not in the store. He was just watching it happen. And sometimes this feels like that from his point of view. And sometimes you want to scream at this person, like, do some say something. Um, yeah, I will get back to this later when I get my head around like what to say and how to say and not to spoil it. Spoil it. Well, the way this ended gave me one idea. I might do a video about this 
with the book. Uh, I did a video uh, not long ago about it was step by bloody step. Uh, it's it's about a completely silent comic, and uh, it's it's a great comic. Completely different. There's nothing graphically or storytelling wise similar to this, but there is one important combining factor in that comic and this one, and I might do kind of a joint video about them. Let's see. But uh, yeah, such a great book. Highly, highly recommend. Next one, a book I haven't read yet, Multiple Warheads by Brandon Graham. And I did kind of fiddle through this. This is a weird book. I looked through certain pages and it feels super bonkers. I have no idea what's happening there, but it feels weird in a really weird way. Reminded me of uh, Philemon, which I have done a video about, and also uh, Coco Bill. I haven't done a video about that, but that, that kind of crazy humor. I don't know what's going on. Maybe you know this, but multiple warheads. I've heard a lot of good things about it. And if this is as crazy and absurd as it looks like, I believe I am going to like this. Next one is one of those fillers, Lazarus by Greg Rucka. This one is called Seven. And yeah, I mean, if you haven't heard of Lazarus, you might have been um, frozen in ice for the last 2000 years. I love this series. Greg Rucka is one of my favorite world builders. When he takes some kind of uh, subject or world and tells a story there, you can feel in everything that he really researched the thing. He thought things, how this one affect that one and so on. And that makes usually the stories logical too, although the, um, the subject itself could be uh, sorcery or not able to die and so on. But it still makes sense when he tells about it. If you haven't heard about Lazarus, it's about the world which has been divided among a few families rather than countries or businesses. They are families, well, which are like corporations and they own certain parts of the world, each of the families. And all those families have a Lazarus, which is kind of an unkillable soldier protecting each family and this story is about concentrating on certain Lazarus called Forever Carlisle. I've been a massive fan of this since the first volume. Next is something that I have owned quite a long time in digital form. The Killer by um, Yakamon and Mats. I found these in Finnish. Uh, there's two hardcovers. First one is parts uh, albums one and three. And the second one is albums four and five. And for some reason here, the Finnish publisher Apollo, they have shrunk down the European comic size. What? In Finland? Oh, but anyway, this, is, this was the only way to get these stories in printed form in Finnish. There, there you go. And some more, maybe some more from this other book. Like here. These books have a great tone. I mean, this is a story of the killer, paid assassin. And it puts you in his mind in a way. When it shows when he's waiting and, and looking for the kill and how he prepares, but also certain other things happening around him. Originally, I think there were 13 albums published, but I've seen only these five translated in Finnish. There was in English an omnibus collecting all 13 volumes, but I couldn't find it. It was sold out. And then, then there have been some kind of 
smaller collected editions in English too. Uh, I think all the albums were collected in, in at least in two or three ways in English, but I never found complete sets. But I saw now that uh, these creators have put out the 13th volume. It's coming out or it's already out. But yeah, I, I think I'd have to find the, the whole uh, English omnibus first. I don't mind if it's this smaller size, I just want the stories. As I said, I've had this in digital form and well, this is an iPad size anyway, so I'm not missing anything in that sense. But I don't like to read them in iPad. So I, I, that's why I bought these analog comics for my collection. Only two books to go. One of them is I'm Still Alive. I have not read this yet, but this is story of a jour journalist. This, and this is from Archaia, Archaia Publisher. It's like this. Graphics. And this is the story of Roberto Saviano. Roberto Saviano made a book about Camorra, Italian mafia. And since he did that, he has been um, on, well, on is it exile or hiding uh, after that? Because his life is in danger. So this is some kind of a story of his life hiding from mafias. He's moving all the time and it's as he, it's his thoughts of his life after the book uh, uh, Gomorrah came out. I'm just in general interested of these things around the mafia world. I read uh, Goodfellas in one of my, when I was on holiday years ago. It came as a bonus with the movie magazine. I read the book and I, I, I had already seen the movie Goodfellas, but I didn't know that it's actually a true story. And when I read the book, uh, there was a forever telling about it, how that book kind of gave uh, people uh, insight, like a window into the real world of uh, mafia and how those dealings were done. And it made the book so much more interesting. And, and afterwards I looked the uh, movie again with totally different eyes. And this kind of uh, fits that same world. The, a person who revealed how the mafia works. He The book he made has names, certain names and everything. It really points fingers at those mafia people. And that's why he is on their hit list, I guess, forever. And the last one, the last one. My favorite thing is monsters. I had seen this book many times uh, on many shelves. I've seen many video thumbnails about this book and I have always skipped them. Uh, the reason for that is that I don't like horror comics. I often try them out. When I see something new coming out, people say that this is good. So I buy one volume and then I can dis get myself disappointed again. But not disappointed, it just doesn't work for me. I'm not big in horror movies either. I don't know why I get my banging my head on the horror comics. Maybe it's because I like fantasy in comics, but not really in movies. Maybe it's that, you know, you never know. When the media changes, you can actually get into the genre. You, di you didn't like in the other media, you, you might like it in the other one. Maybe, maybe it's that one. So I thought that this was a monster book. It kind of is, but it's not really a monster book and it's not a horror book at all. That's not the thing. It's just done through that theme of monsters, but it's in real life. But then I watched a video by Off Myself because I told you, you have to watch these videos. It's illegal not to watch them. So I watched the video and realized that this has nothing to do with monsters. And I ordered the book and it's also one of the best reads for a long time. The whole concept is bonkers. This is mind-blowing stuff. Every spread is something that I, I spend a lot of time in every spread. Just think, looking at the layouts, what is said in, in this uh, spread and how it was executed. Just the execution of this story is mind-blowing. 
And then I read, uh, I had to go and read more about the artist and the creation of this book. And it made this whole experience even more grander. I mean, it looks like every page is um, this kind of leaflet, like a school leaflet. And then there is like the layer that there's a reason why this is done like this scrapbook. Because the execution and the form of the book it actually integrates perfectly into the story. There's a certain thing about the story why, and why this is done that way. I have never ever seen anything like this. And that's why I felt, uh, that's why it felt so important. I, I, I love it when I'm surprised. You know, I've been reading comics all my life, but still sometimes someone comes up with an idea, novel idea how to use this form that we all think that we all know inside and out. And um, it says book one, and as far as I understand, there should be a book two coming out too. But if there isn't, even this is something that I'll be rereading a lot. I'm kind of happy this was the last book on the Bible because I can uh, kind of focus on it. Yeah, it, it's... Uh, it's one of those things, if any of my friends would say, could you show me some comic book that breaks all the rules? This, this is definitely one of those. Okay, that was two massive piles of comics that I went through. Uh, but, you know, that's what I had to show. Sometimes these things pile up. And, and as I said, I might not be buying any new comics this year. Uh, and, but in, within these two piles, there's already so much comics that I have not read yet that they should take me at least to the summer because I have decided to reread a lot of my older comics now and focus more also on my European comics uh, series, you know, do you know European comics? Uh, so um, it's a good thing also. It's a good thing also. And I'm kind of waiting to get my hands on it. But I have to remind that, as I said, my radiation therapy is ongoing now and the side effects are kicking in. So it could be easily a month or two that I am unable to do videos. But if there'll be nothing major issues, then I'll just jump in and do the videos because it's fun. But anyway, that was it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.